Welcome along. Today is Wednesday, the 26th of May, 2021. It's 4 p.m. Well, it's getting close to it anyway. It's time for our 4 p.m. sway and stretch. Last snack of the day. And and this is where we do our sway and our stretch, really. So um, if you're in and looking for the catch up, if you're a catcher up, then um, stick around. Stay with us if this is the one you want. If you don't, they're all on our Facebook group. Stay with us. Have a look. See what you think. You can skip through this little preamble if you want to, but, you know, stay, I would. It's where we have a little chance to catch up and have a chin wag, find out what's been happening in each other's worlds. Not a lot here. Um, busy day doing paperwork and uh, sort of day outside. You know? it's, it's one thing or the other. It's grey, a little bit chilly, but hey, you know, it is what it is, isn't it? We just carry on. We carry on. So, listen, uh, if you are on Facebook watching this on Catch Up, drop us a comment in, let us know you've been in. It's always good to know. And uh, we'll we'll say hello back to you. If it isn't the one you want, go find the one you do want, and then we'll see you once you've got up again. I'm going to leave you there. I'm going to pop across, start saying to our live live as they start to come on board. And I can see Mrs. Perry is first in the house. Keen and eager today. Christine, straight in there. <clears throat> good to have you with us. This might be Ken who's coming in as well. Say hi as you come on board. Let us know you're here. Have our little preamble. It's good to catch up, you know. I know I'm just talking to myself really here. <laughs> I'm talking to, to the phone, but I'm talking to myself really, aren't I? Um, we can't talk back, but it's nice to know that you're there. And uh, it's nice for us to say hello to each other, I think. Spread a little bit of happiness, yeah? So, do that. Now, um, if you aren't able to stay for the whole of the snack because i know sometimes you know things happen the doorbell rings or the phone rings someone of drives those sorts of things so it's it's the great thing about this is if that happens then it's available on facebook straight away afterwards isn't it so you can just catch up with it and you can ha uh, get it straight away Pick up where you left off or start the whole thing again. Also, if there's something you're not sure about, especially with our swaying stretch, we add changes to our movements as we go through the week. Might be something you're a little unsure about. You can go back and have a look at it. <coughs> Excuse me. Frog in the tray. Or you can decide to just watch, have a look first time round, see what you think of it, see how you want to do it. Standing, seated, supported or not. Whether you want to do arms and legs together, whether you just want to do a sway from side to side, or you want to do the more difficult version, it's up to you. That's the great thing, you know, and then you can just watch it again. We don't mind. That's what we're all about. 14 months down the line from where we first started. Can you believe it? That was on um, Sunday, wasn't it? It was our, our 14th birthday, 14th month of the day <laughs> when we, um, we started this. Beck started it as a 30-day thing. And here we are, 14 days later. Right, let's sell it to a few other people. I'll stop rambling now. Ken Green, good afternoon to you. Welcome along. Um, chase away the clouds of stiffness. See what I can do for you there, um, Ken. Uh, Maddie, good afternoon to you. Uh, Pat Haynes, good afternoon to you as well. Adil, good to see you. Uh, had your second COVID jab this morning. Now uh, trying to do gardening in between showers. Lost the sun from this morning. Yeah, we, we haven't really had a great deal of sun. We had a little bit of sun peeping through earlier on but that's probably all it did it really, really did just sort of peep through um and then it's been sort of grey and overcast ever since so he said we're supposed to be getting some nice weather coming fingers crossed we could do with a bit of nice weather couldn't we we need the rain for the for the garden you know i know that can we have it at night <laughs> we'll have the nice weather during the day it'd be lovely carol kent good afternoon to you miss kelsey's earlier so i'll pop back to hers after this one um, good afternoon to you, George, as well. Been a dull day, but a still day. Uh, been dull all day, but still dry. Sorry, I'll get my glasses uh, unsteamed and away we go. Anne Campbell, hello, how are you? Good to see you. It's not an 8am, so uh, alive for you, Anne. <laughs> Hope you well. Uh, Sandra, good afternoon to you. Uh, just came in from the garden. I need to get out to the garden this weekend. I want to get the grass cut desperately, but every time I get a chance to, time-wise, it's raining or it's just rained 
So I'm hoping that we get some nice weather so I can get out there. I only cut it last weekend, but you know, you get bits of rain, you get rain on it, don't you? We had quite a bit of rain. It starts to sprout again. It grows like topsy. So I want to get out there and give it a good old, uh, a good old lawn mowing again. Uh, Vivian, good afternoon to you uh, and everyone. Uh, been pottering in the garden, but weather's not great. No, it's not, is it? Now listen, we are at four o'clock. So if you want to lose the comments off the bottom of the screen, you know what to do. Swipe them to the right. They are gone. Should we have our three, two, one? There we go. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome along. You're with Dave Montgomery from Later Life Training. Today is Wednesday, the 26th of May, 2021. It's our 4 p.m. movement snack. Third opportunity to add those additional movement minutes into our day. And that is what it is all about. Adding extra minutes over and above everything else we already do. <clears throat> now, as always, as always, even, you can do it in standing or you can see, do it in seated. Choices is yours. You just make the choice. That's the great thing about this. Should we get ourselves ready to go? Bring ourselves in. Look, okay, standing wise, I've got some fixed external support available to me. Nothing on the floor that is going to cause me uh, a, a, a problem. So nothing that I can trip over, nothing that's gonna get in my way. Good sturdy chair for if we're gonna be in a seated position. Remember with this, especially with our sway movement, um, if you want to have a look at it first and then decide how you want to do it, the choice is totally yours. Now, we started off Monday with just an arm movement and a stance. Uh, and, and yesterday, Bex, I, I just look, go with it and I'll pick it up from wherever you are. She asked me if there was anything in particular I wanted to do. Um, I said, look, just go and I will pick it up from where you've left off. So um, <laughs> I spent this morning thinking, oh, well, right, OK, I've got to get that into my head. But it's there. It's there at the moment anyway. So um, if you want to have a look at it and then decide how you want to do it, whether you want to do it standing, supported, seated, the choice is yours. Or you just want to have a look at it and think, yeah, I think I've got that. I'll have a go. Or I might just stay with the sway side to side or the sway forward and backwards. We'll see. Yeah, the choice is yours. That's the great thing about all of this. In standing, we've got our fixed external support available to us. Posture wise, we've got our heels in line with our knees and our knees are in line with our hips. Remember this little couple of extra inches we can gain here by just lifting, growing these extra inches from our hips, separating the ribs and hips to bring the shoulders up, back, and then press them down. So we're opening this rib cage. <clears throat> In our seated position, then the first thing we're going to do is bring ourselves off the back of the chair, lifting ourselves away from the back of it so we sit that bit taller. From here, it's a lift and a shift as we bring ourselves into the front third of the chair. Now, sat here, Again, we're lining everything up. We're lifting here to get that extra bit of height. Shoulders back and down, pressing them down, and we start with our circulation boosting. <clears throat> now, as always, our circulation boosting is about rhythmical, flowing movements that start to get the, the body increasing its uh, circulation. That's why it's called circulation boosting, believe it or not. But you wondered where I was going with that one, didn't you? <laughs> but what it starts to do is get the heart to beat a little bit faster. It starts to get us breathing a little bit heavier. But before it even does that, it starts to open those arteries. It starts to dilate them so that we can start to get that blood flowing a lot easier around our body as well. To increase the intensity, we don't go faster. It's not about going faster. It's about going bigger. So if we can make this into a march by lifting the foot off the floor. Now, I know I say this all the time, but, you know, I really do mean it. Rather than lose technique here, rather than have a little sway from side to side or lean back a little bit. If you're feeling it in your hips, it's perfectly all right. Bring it back down into this heel raise or a toe tap or something. There's a lot of action going on here. You know, you've already got your hip at 90 degrees and then you're asking it to go more. It's like doing this in standing. You're going to feel it. Okay, in standing, we can see with this march, we get the chance to be able to point the toes down at the floor. So we start to get a little bit of mobility happening into those ankles as well. And we know from our snacks through the day that our ankles are really important and crucial to our balance and stability. Again, we've got our external support available to us. It might be that you've got your support in front. Whichever we have, side, in front, non or seated, we'll add an arm in. And the movement here is about driving this elbow backwards, keeping the arm fairly bent. So it's a driven movement and the arm stays fairly close into the body, but not tucked right in. So we're not in here. We just go nicely in line by the side of the body in line with our shoulder. 
Now, we're gonna change arms. So, if you have support, if it's in front of you, you pop your hand down and you bring the other hand off. Obviously, in standing uh, without support and you're seated, you can just change hands. Change hand every now and again if you want to. However, if your support is to the side, we need to come to a pause because we need to turn into our support, making sure one hand stays on there all the time. And then we can start with that march again on the other side, bringing that arm back in. Seated, standing, if we feel steady, stable, coordinated, we can do all together, look. All four limbs moving at the same time. If you're chattering away like me, there's five bits of the body moving. Here, bigger movement overall is what we've got. So we haven't made the movement bigger march-wise, we haven't made the arms bigger, but in total, more of the body is moving and that's what's gonna cause that increase in circulation. So after about a couple of minutes of this in total from start to end, slow it down just a little bit, bring it to a pause, and we should feel as though we want to take a couple of deep breaths. Remember, we're not getting ready to run a marathon or anything. We're just trying to give that circulation a, a little boost. Get it going. A great thing to be able to crowbar in this. If you've been sat down for a while, have a little circulation boost before you go and do whatever it is you're going to do. Okay, sway. So let's pick it up from where we were yesterday, where, where Bex left you yesterday. Support available if you want to. We can use it. And it might be that you use your support by just placing your bottom against your support. So you've got the ability to do both arms at the same time. Let's have a look at the arm movement that we have. So we started off with this movement of bringing the arms up and down and this floating movement, didn't we? That's where we started on Monday. Now, yesterday we uh, had a count of four in there as well. So now we're engaging our brain as well to count with us. And count it out loud. It's, it's a good way of making sure you're not holding your breath, which we sometimes do when we try and think and focus on something, yeah? So we've got this one two, three, four. Here we take a pause. The hand comes round and down as the other hand comes up. And then we've got that one, two, three, four. And we've got the ability to take the hand around and reset at the top. Okay. The important thing here is this flowing of the wrists. So as we're raising the arm up, the fingers are pointing down towards the floor. And as we raise them, bring them back down and raise them back down. As we bring them back down, fingers towards the ceiling. So you get the movement within your wrist. And remember, if your range of motion is smaller, I can't talk today if your range of motion, if your range of motion is smaller, then that's fine. It's where it's comfortable for you. It's these slow control movements that allow us to get that mobility into our shoulders, into our wrists and to feel that movement. It's a relaxing type of movement we're doing. Now, if we're using our support and it's to the side, then you're gonna do one arm at a time and you'll still have that count of four. And at that point, you'll bring it around and back down. So you've still got this circular motion out to the side to bring it back down before you come back up again. In seated, exactly the same movement. So let's have a little pause. <sighs> Switch off for a minute. <clears throat> come back in and we can have a go at it in seated as well. So we've got this movement here. Now just be aware, obviously, that your hands are going to come down by the side of you as far as the movement in seated is concerned because we've got that bent knee position. So if it feels more comfortable for you to have it sort of lap height, have it lap height. It's where feels comfortable to you. But again, don't take your hands too high, okay? So that is our hand movement. Now, with Monday, we had this staggered stance. So we've got one foot facing forward, the other foot facing out slightly, and we've got this movement coming forward and backwards as our sway. So we were shifting the weight onto the front leg and then onto the back leg. What we introduced, however, yesterday was a step in there as well. And the step happens on that rotation around, okay? And it's a double step in as much as on the top half of that rotation, we step back in, 
and on the bottom half we step out on the other leg. So from this position here where we'd finished we've got this step in and then as we come back down we've got this step out so we're ready on the other side to go back into those arms up and down. Have a look at it, see what you think. So we've got the staggered starts to start off with. Hands in position and we go one, two, three, four, step in, step out, and then we're able to go one, two, three, four, step in, step out, and we're ready to go again. Yeah? Now, in standing, if you're using your support to the side of you, you've still got the ability to do that movement. You're going to be a step in and a step out in one movement. So stepping back in. Yeah? So you'll be here to start off with. <clears throat> Sorry, I did that wrong, didn't I? You'll be here to start off with, with that shift of weight forward and backwards. And then as you bring it around, here is your step back in. Now at that point, you can reset and then go back in. Or you could take that point as your turn to change direction to the other side, set yourself up, step forward, and away you go again on the other side. If your support is to the side of you, remember, we're going to take our hands slightly forward first of all. So as we sway forward and backwards, we're coming in line with our support. And remember, as you step forward, it's a heel toe. As we come back in, toe heel, and we bring it back to our hip distance. Seated, <clears throat> we have the ability to have that staggered stance still. We've got a shift of weight from our hips, forward and backwards, and we've still got the ability there with that circular movement to step back in, step back out on the other side and reset ourselves ready to go. So seated wise, it would look like this. Yeah, here's our fourth. There, we step back in, we step out, and we're ready to go again with our other leg, with this hinge at the hip. Slow, controlled movements. And it's quite difficult in a seated position. <laughs> a lot of stuff going on there. Let's do it one more time in our standing before we move on, and this is probably just as much for me catching up on what we've uh, what we've added in <clears throat> we'll add more in tomorrow okay so staggered stance one hand up one hand down yeah and we go one two three four step in step out and one two, three, four, step in, step out, and away you go again. Now flowing, controlled movements, feeling that movement through your wrists, through your shoulders, thinking about your stability here, as you step back into it and go straight back in. Now, if you want to put the pause in there, feel free. So here you can pause part way. Set yourself and then away you go again. That is our sway routine. Um, recapped, ready for us to add more on tomorrow. Let's have a look at our stretches. So we're going to start off with our calf. In our standing position, it's a big step backwards. Toe down, heel down, toes pointing in the same direction, and then a bend of that front knee to allow yourself to lean into it. Support, if you're using it, bring your hand in front. So as you lean forward with that bend of the knee, you're coming in line with your support. <clears throat> Straight back from heel down to head, the stretch is in our calf. We 
We hold it for around about 12 to 20 seconds and then we ease off. In seated, extend the leg away in front, heel down, toes up. We're in the front third of the chair. Ease the heel away a little bit more, bring the toes in towards you, but keep this knee soft. And then you'll feel that lengthening down through the back of your calf. So whether you're standing or seated, bring yourself into that stretch. Staying tall, remember, in standing, you're just allowing yourself to lean in because of the bend of the knee. In seated, you're easing the heel away, bringing the toes in. We feel the lengthening of that muscle in the back of our leg. And when we've reached our, our 12 to 20 seconds, whichever works for you, ease off, bring the foot back in. And really important here, feel that stretch ending. Now in standing, turn to the other side, set yourself up. And if you're using that support, turn into it. Seated, step yourself up, extend the leg away. Standing, you're stepping backwards. In standing, bend your front knee and allow yourself to lean into it. In seated, ease the heel away, bring the toes in towards you. And just feel that lengthening coming back in to the back of the calf. Feels good. Just feel that lengthen of the muscle. And then release out of it, bring the foot back in and feel that stretch ending. Let's move into the back of our thigh. So have a look at it in seated firstly. Extend the foot away again, but this time allow the toes to relax down towards the floor. Now we're sitting tall, but what we're going to do is lift a little bit taller and then supporting ourselves with the hands on the bent leg, hinge from the hip forwards. And this hinge is a bend straight from the hips. There's no bending at the waist. We bend from the hips with that hinge. And that brings this stretch onto the back of our thigh. Now in standing, what we do is a step forward. Again, plant the foot flat on the floor this time in standing. We've got this tall position, our hand is in front. Lift that little bit taller, and again, just hinge from your hip, and here is that stretch. So whether it's standing or seated, get yourself into position, step out of it, lift a little bit taller, and hinge. Now, if you're not using your support, Hands-wise, you can leave them here. You can pop them onto your back leg or onto your hips. Just don't put them on this front leg, okay? Don't put any pressure down through that front knee. And then after you've held it for a short while, take a deep breath in. And if you can, take it a little bit further. So in standing, push your bottom away. In seated, hinge a little bit further. And just feel that stretch coming back on, helping with flexibility. Ease out of it, unhinging stepping back in and again feel the stretch ending. Change to your other side with your support or not and you see to extend your other leg. Set yourself up, this tall lift and this hinge to feel that stretch come in. Down through the here, from the bottom down to the back of the knee. And that's why we lift that a little bit taller. We start the stretch before we've even hinged. And that means we don't have to hinge as far. Once you've held that for a few seconds, breathe in, breathe out, take it a little bit further if you can, and just listen to your body. A stretch you should feel, but it shouldn't hurt. You yeah? actually should feel that lengthening, but there shouldn't be any pain. If there is, release it a little bit. Ease on up, step in. You might just want to have a little pedal through with those feet just to ease those legs off. Let's go into the chest. So, that hands into the small of the back. Now you can either take the palms so they're facing away or face them into you. And then from there, it's a draw of the shoulders back, but also a lift of that chest. So you open the chest. The chest lift is just as important. In seated, you have a further option. So hands exactly the same, but you could also place them onto the back of the chair behind you, just on the side. Don't pull on it. Place them there. Chest lifts, shoulders come back and we get that lengthening across the top of the chest. So up here is where we're aiming to get that lengthening of the chest. Again, just holding that for 12 to 20 seconds, whatever's right for you, and then release out, feel that end. Hug a tree time, one hand inside the other, push your way, hold that tree, and then just bring your shoulders forward and feel the nice lengthening across the top of the back. Now, if you feel comfortable with it, Lower your head slightly and take your gaze just under your hands. So you just get a bit of a lengthening up through the back of the neck as well. We talk a lot about our posture in our snacks, don't we? We talk about shoulders back and standing tall. Here's a chance just to lengthen those muscles again. 
give them a little bit of stretch. They work hard to keep us in that good position. Excellent. Okay, from there, one last stretch. Now, let's have a look at it in seated first thing, and then standing is exactly the same, really. So, hand on the shoulder, ease the elbow up to where you feel comfortable, and then, if you can, arm comes up, hand comes down, and we reach a little bit towards if we're trying to really get ourselves noticed in a crowd. If you struggle with taking your arm above your head, then it's here and here, okay? From there, hand comes down. A slight difference here, because we lift a little bit taller, but we're not gonna be able to get the lift we can with the arm up. So then we just extend across a little bit. Bum stays firmly on the chest, so we're not leaning across like here, this. We're le keeping the bottom where it is and just tipping the, the upper body slightly. Just to feel this lengthening down through the side. Now, it's exactly the same in standing. Just make sure you've got a good base of support. And if you want to, you can use your support behind you. So you could use that fixed external support as that reference point, regardless of whether the arm is up or we're here. Yeah. Once you're doing it on one side, change to the other and feel the lengthening of these muscles down through the side of the body. That's where we want to feel it. And that includes the muscles that are between our ribs that are working constantly as we breathe in and breathe out, they help the ribs expand and release, expand and release to increase that chest cavity to accommodate our lungs. That is it, we are done. That is our 4 p.m. sway and stretch. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Um, I will see you, I'll be in a different location, but I'll see you tomorrow at four o'clock, okay? Plenty of opportunity for you to crowbar additional stuff in and, and you know that's what it's about as well. Keep crowbarring in that additional activity because it just adds to the amount of minutes that we add into our day. And the more minutes of activity we add into our day, the better. The better we feel, the better it is for us, okay? The better our range of motion gets. All those sorts of things. It's all plus, 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 plus. That's what you get with Make Movement Your Mission, yeah? Have a great evening. Crowbar in some additional activities. I will see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. Stay active, stay moving, folks, and I'll see you tomorrow. Toodle pips.